on. Blessed be the name of the Lord, people. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday. Wow, so many things are happening more every day, every day, every day. Uh, I just been out, uh, went by the homeless sites today. Uh, just kind of did a little brief, uh, met some new people there. I got some information. and So anyway, uh, I'll be back now and I'm going to do a video because a lot of news are going on. A lot of news around the world, as always. Um, I'm going to get through the fair use notice really quickly here. Uh, today I'll be talking about just the things going on, La Palma, and um, we had an earthquake in Alaska yesterday. Uh, we had a lot of things going on. Uh, so I'm going to be showing Lewis reports and uh, BP Earthwatch and uh, the Boo 77. And uh, we're going to go to Carrie Geddon today too because she's talking about uh, these things going to be happening. And I had, a, I had a dream last night to kind of tie in with what she's talking about. Uh, and so, I don't know, people, we got a lot of things going on. As we know, judgments are on the land, and they are getting heaped up, hyped up, and I tell you, it's just getting worse and worse, waxing worse and worse. I just was talking to the Lord because I haven't had time to talk to him about what I should teach today. So he gave me, Joel, uh, give me, um, what I just said it was, Jonah, Jonah 2, uh, oh, let me see what it was, I forgot now. I think it's Jonah 2, I think he gave me. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's in my bottom of my, on my list here, but, uh, we got to be going over that chapter and then I'm going to be doing some quick little news things. I got a lot of things here and I don't want to have the video, but no more than an hour, hopefully. Uh, so, uh, we're going to go ahead and start right now. Uh, I'm going to sing, uh, put my song on the screen, everything. I love this song so much by Mia, uh, cause he is my everything. I'm going to be sharing another thing. Um, I know you guys might have heard about this three-year-old uh, who was found in the woods. And so I got a little clip video, five minutes, and I hope I don't get a strike on it. But uh, I want to share it with you guys, okay, because it's just really powerful. It reminds me of when I used to go to Walmart. And Lord say, oh, Mona, go to Walmart. You're going to meet this person. Uh, it's just amazing. I love these miracle testimonies, so I'm going to be sharing that. And also, uh, it's just amazing what kind of God we have, we, we serve. We should be really wanting to know who he is and know who he is, people. So let's go ahead and play He's My Everything. Absolutely, Mia, He's My Everything. And then we'll get on into this news and things we have to share here today. So let me go ahead and mute it out. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Yeah. 
7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Unidentified aircraft struck multiple Iranian targets in Syria. Iran says it accumulated a considerably higher amount of enriched uranium beyond the figures reported by the International Atomic Energy Agency. Jerusalem proclaims its keen aspiration to broaden the Abraham Accords, including with the Palestinians. Ongoing German Chancellor Angela Merkel stressed that her country would preserve its post-Holocaust commitments to the State of Israel, regardless of who may hold the reins of power in Berlin. During a three-day farewell visit, the German Chancellor held a long list of meetings and dedicated events, which, according to Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, reflected Israel's deep appreciation. <laughs> ראוי לציון. למרות העובדה שאת מנהיגה של גרמניה, וכאן זו מדינת היהודים, אנחנו בישראל מלאי הערכה אלייך ולתפקיד ההיסטורי שאת ממלאת, ואנחנו מקווים שתמשיכי למלא. המחויבות שלך, גברתי הקנצלרית, לביטחונה של מדינת ישראל, היא גם במעשים, לא רק במחוות ובמילים. את כל ברור ונחרץ של תמיכה בישראל, בגרמניה, באירופה ובכל מקום אליו את מגיעה. על זה אני רוצה להודות לך בשם כולנו. Alongside the voiced appreciation of the long-time German leader, Prime Minister Bennett sought to underscore Israel's democratic nature, which in contrast to its enemies, deserves support from the international community in general, and like-minded democratic nations in particular. The Israeli Prime Minister also seized the opportunity to magnify the malign behavior of the Islamic Republic of Iran throughout the Middle East, as well as Tehran's determination to acquire nuclear weapon capabilities. Gvirtia Kanzlerit, Tochnit Agarina Iranit higia leshalav shemechayev manigut. Hashlamayim afichata shel Iran למדינת סף גרעינית תהיה כתם מוסרי על העולם החופשי ותאיים על שלום העולם. אנחנו רואים איך האיראנים מתנהגים כרגע עוד בלי מטריה גרעינית בסוריה, בעיראק, בלבנון, בתימן, בעזה ובמפרץ. ניתן רק לדמיין את מידת הנזק שמגרמו אם העולם ידע שמאחורי הבריונות הזאת עומדת גם פצצת גרעין. Prime Minister Bennett further asserted that Germany's position vis-a-vis -vis the Islamic Republic's nuclear program is crucial, all the while adding that Israel will persist with its daily operational activities to thwart Iranian efforts to equip its proxies with advanced weaponry. את האיראנים אין טעם לנסות לפייס. הם מפרשים פייסנות כחולשה. הם ממשיכים להטל ולשחק בקהילייה הבינלאומית, למשוך זמן וכל הזמן להתקדם בהשארת האורניום ובערעור היציבות באזור. זאת הנקודה הקריטית בזמן, ועמדתה של גרמניה חשובה מאוד. אנחנו בישראל עסוקים במעשים ופועלים מול איראן בכל המימדים, כולל בלימה יומיומית של הניסיונות שלהם להציף את האזור שלנו בנשק. It is important to know that the remarks by the Israeli Prime Minister were made merely a day and a half after the Damascus regime pointed a blaming finger at Jerusalem for allegedly striking a number of targets in Syria, which according to all accounts, included Iranian-owned weapons caches that were situated within the Syrian army's T-4 Air Force base in the eastern countryside of Homs Governet, alongside additional strikes that targeted Iranian-controlled infrastructure in the eastern Syrian border region with Iraq, near the town of Al-Bukamal. According to a Syrian military source quoted by the Damascus-run Sana News Agency, 
The air attack was carried out from the El Tanf area that is situated near the triangular border line separating Iraq, Jordan, and Syria. And while Syria's aerial defense array was activated, substantive damage was reported in both the Syrian T-4 Air Force Base and Iranian infrastructure that served as a training hub for proxies operating in the region. Despite the immediate attribution of responsibility to Israel, the IDF did not confirm nor deny its involvement in response to TV7's request for comment. It is important to highlight that the aerial strike took place less than 12 hours before Iranian Foreign Minister Hassan Amir Abdullahian traveled from Beirut to Damascus, where he held talks with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, including on ways to further bolster bilateral cooperation on a number of topics of mutual interest. Separately in Tehran, head of the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran, Mohammad Islami, announced on Saturday that the Islamic Republic has managed to accumulate more than 120 kilograms of 20% enriched uranium, which is 46 kilograms more than the latest reported quantity that was published by the International Atomic Energy Agency. The major leap, which in effect constitutes 80% of enriched material required to produce a single nuclear payload, is the latest of defined nuclear-related measures by the Ayatollah regime which has threatened to render the globally aspired diplomatic path null and void. Speaking on Tehran's defiant approach to prospects of resuming nuclear talks in Vienna, German Chancellor Angela Merkel spoke of her frustrations regarding the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA, which is the technical term for the 2015 nuclear agreement. I have the JCPOA never for ideal, but always for better than no one abmachung to have. Das kann man auch anders sehen. Jetzt sind wir in einem sehr äh, schwierigen, in einer sehr schwierigen Situation, weil äh, die neue amerikanische Administration zwar die Rückkehr in Aussicht gestellt hat, aber Tag für Tag verstreicht und der Iran keine äh, Anzeichen macht, äh, die Verhandlungen wieder zu beginnen. Und mit jedem dieser Tage wird aber die Anreicherung von Uran äh, erhöht. Und das ist schon eine sehr kritische Diskussion, Situation, in der wir auch äh, unter den E3 plus 3 natürlich miteinander sprechen müssen, was das bedeutet. Und ich sehe auch hier Russland und China in der Verantwortung, denn wenn das JCPOA nicht mehr das ist, was es bezwecken sollte, dann ist das natürlich schwierig. Deshalb stehen uns jetzt sehr, sehr entscheidende Wochen in dieser Frage bevor. Turning to the Foreign Ministry in Jerusalem, where Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid addressed a lobby for the advancement of the Abraham Accords, asserting Jerusalem's efforts to broaden its circle of peace. Lapid noted the symbolism of every ribbon cut, which marks the opening of yet another diplomatic mission, and called upon additional Arab states, including the Palestinians, to grant peace a chance. ואני ושר החוץ האמירתי, או שר החוץ הבחרני, או שר החוץ המרוקאי, גוזרים את הסרט ומכריזים על פתיחת השגרירות. יחד עם כל סרט כזה, גזרנו גם את הקשר הגורדי של שנאה ואלימות ואיבה. גזרנו את הרעיון שאין מוצא לסכסוך הישראלי ערבי ואין לאן להתקדם איתו. אני מנצל מפה את ההזדמנות כדי לקרוא גם לפלסטינים, גם לאזרחיה של כל אומה ערבית שמקשיבה לנו, פנינו לשלום. Jerusalem's top diplomat went on to warn Israel's enemies from testing its capabilities and determination. מפה, מבירת ישראל החופשית, ירושלים, אני אומר לכל אויבינו, אם תאסרו עלינו מלחמה, תפסידו. אנחנו... חזקים יותר ממה שאתם משערים, נחושים יותר ממה שאתם חושבים, מוכנים להקריב יותר ממה שאתם מאמינים. אם במקום זה תחליטו להצטרף להסכמי אברהם, להביא לעמים שלכם שגשוג ומקומות עבודה ותרבות של קדמה והצלחה, ידנו מושטת אליכם, בואו נעשה את זה יחד. The Israeli Foreign Minister went on to reiterate Jerusalem's gratitude to the previous president of the United States, Donald Trump, for his role in forging the Abraham Accords, as well as to the Israeli head of the opposition, Benjamin Netanyahu, 
who was instrumental in facilitating those agreements. Separately, Minister Lapid, who is set to travel to the United States tonight for a trilateral summit, noted that while the main focus of deliberations is to thwart Tehran's nuclear aspirations, the Abraham Accords will also be on the agenda. I go to Washington tonight to meet with the government. The Blinken and the Emirati Minister ונדון כמובן בדרכים השונות לעצור את הגרעין האיראני שהוא איום על העולם כולו אבל אחד הנושאים המרכזיים שיהיו על השולחן בפגישה הזו היא הרחבת הסכמי הבראה הכנסת מדינות נוספות למעגל השלום זה לא יקרה ביום זה לא יקרה בחודש אבל הפעם זה לא ייקח עשרות שנים זה קל יותר כשיש בסיס זה קל יותר כשיש מדינות חשובות שכבר חצו את הרוביקון. Thank you for watching us as part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative. I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Argentina in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shavua Tovu Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. Twenty twenty one. Guys, as the solar winds are starting to pick up from the CME, we're starting to see those quakes. And we've got a 6.9 now that's popped up offshore of Alaska, right there, 115 kilometers east of Chignik, Alaska. There's no tsunami warnings up at this time, but our solar winds have picked up a, probably 100 or so kilometers per second since last night. Still on the rise somewhat. We were peaking uh, over 400 um, probably around daylight this morning so what we're looking at now is the continuation of the CME's impact on the planet it's uh, even though this area was not sun facing at that time we've seen that before it's just pressure on the entire ring of fire the whole planet feels these reverberations of these shock waves from the sun and if we look back just a couple of days, you not only got the 6.9 here in Alaska, we had the 6.9 in Vanuatu and a 6.2 in Hawaii. Now, these were before, the, those last two were before we started to see the increase in solar wind. But this one is occurring because of that. And when we see these CMEs, especially with a filament release, a lot of times they will hit the northern ring of fire. I've seen it hit it uh, with eights several times watching and tracking an incoming CME. Now, looking at space weather now, we've had a couple peaks, and it's dipping around 400, a little over 393.7 kilometers per second. Now, your density is at 6.8 protein proton centimeter cubed. That, according to the chart, would peak at around 25. That's pretty dense, and uh, that's the how many particles or these uh, energized particles are in this cloud. Now, the geomagnetic storm warning. NOAA forecasters say there's a 35% chance of geomagnetic storms today, October 11th, when a CME is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field. Storm levels could reach category G2, moderately strong. If such a storm occurs during nighttime hours, auroras could be visible in northern tiers of the U.S. from New England to Washington. And this is what we have. Your solar wind speed indicated here in the purple line. The average is just a little above 300 right there, 311. That's about average. And then we've seen it come up as the morning gets here, uh, 416 here. Different peaks, you can see it, 407, 379, 407. And this it's projected to get around 500 kilometers per second. But again, when you're dealing with an explosion that regardless of what some people say about the size or the shape of the Earth, 93 million miles is one AU or one astronomical unit. That's how far the sun is from the earth. And so that's a long way to detect uh, not only the exact arrival time, but the speed until it starts to cross these satellites. Now, this is going back to last night in La Palma itself, a few hours ago. 
but uh, it was very strong throughout the night. Some of these explosions were um, twice this high, and lava was pouring over this flank where you see it now to the right of the uh, cinder cone, and lava has been flowing steadily out that uh, left flank and down to the right through the valley all throughout uh, yesterday and today. It's just been very steady. Now, let's look at it now. Now, with the clouds and haze and the way the wind has turned and blowing back across the top of the summit from the ocean, the visibility is not that good. But you can still hear it. You can see this lava stream here. And in the daytime, guys, it's harder to see the lighter areas where you're seeing lava that's just uh, being thrown out of the crater. But this thing's very active still. You can listen to it. It's saying 1,186 buildings and homes have been destroyed. 38.3 kilometers of roads have been covered. You still got um, your sulfur dioxide coming out at 6,876 tons per day. We saw this rise to over 1,100. And you still got a lot of carbon dioxide going out. You can see in the camera to the left how far this thing is actually blowing up above the cloud layer there in the left image. And some of these images, as they switch the camera, you've got some that's got one, two, and three cameras like TV Canaries. And you can see the, from one angle, the lava much better, and they will switch here. But I just want to um, turn this up for a moment and let you listen to it. And uh, guys, it sounds as loud as it did last night. You're not seeing all the volatility because of the cloud cover and the daylight and all, but there's a lot of activity going on and it does seem to pick up somewhat at night. Guys, and just switching uh, to TV La Palma, this was last night also, but you can see how active this volcano was. You see the different lava flows and we saw two or three different uh, sections burst and allow a lot more lava to come through. But uh, in the top of the screen to the right, that mound that you see glowing, has that grew overnight tremendously. It was very concerning because it was still very hot. But lava bomb after lava bomb was hitting this thing, and it looked like it almost would um, create an avalanche because it was getting so strong. But if this thing cools and hardens, it's just making this thing get larger and larger. Again, you can see from here the different lava streams. Now, these are the local, excuse me, earthquakes there, 1110, that's today here. Now, we saw this one from 1010 yesterday keep increasing in, in its height, this chart, as the day went on and more quakes come in. And I think that's what we're starting to see here now. Less quakes is better. It means that we more than likely have less lava movement underground. But this thing could rise just as this did. Now, there was an early warning in September about this or before the volcano uh, occurred and um, it it should have been if you ask me a sign of what was coming it shouldn't have been that big of a surprise and I think some people were watching it but let's just look back at another chart now this goes back 90 days there was not that much activity going back to July 14th in here but when you get into around September the 12th check this out way higher than what we're seeing now in other words this is the chart that you just saw right here. And this is what we were getting, again, back at September 12th through around September 19th, right in that area, about a week or, or eight days of very strong quakes and many more of them. And that I think this was an in indicator, guys, that lava was approaching the area where it is erupting now. So in the future, this would be a good chart to keep for you guys there in La Palma. I know sometimes it's 50 years between these events, but that indication there starting in September with that many quakes definitely should have been a very good indicator of what was coming. And this map gives you an idea that everything's on the southern side of the island pretty much, even though we saw that uplift on the northern side. These earthquakes have been, this is going on from uh, September the 11th until today. And there's been 200, I mean, 2,286 events. But everything's down in this area, and you can see they're divided by, uh, by their location. A lot of them are on the west side, a lot of them on the east side. So this entire area, it, it seems to be 
um, above a lot of that magma that's moving. But guys, just keep your thoughts and prayers on the folks there in La Palma. They are catching it. You can see some of these uh, other images coming in. The uh, They will rebuild. They've done it before. And, and I've heard reports that this lava can take, depending on the thickness, uh, two to three years to cool down enough to where you can work with it and recut your roads out and, re and start trying to do something with the land itself. But the island is expanding. We're watching it, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. with Israeli News Live and uh, finally we do have a link for you for this particular freedom rally that's going on in the panhandle of Florida, Pensacola, Florida to be exact and uh, so I wanted to uh, make sure you guys are aware uh, you can get more information. You know I can't say a whole lot uh, other than the cat blocking the light to the camera here. Uh, but at any rate there, let me just kind of go over some of the details here with you. If you look there at the speakers, Yana is listed on there. She's actually going to be, I think, one of the first speakers there uh, talking a little bit. Won't be a long uh, discussion because they're very limited on time on this. And this rally is really to help educate the people in Northwest Florida of what's going on. Uh, but some very well-known names. And there's some names that are not even mentioned on here that are also very well-known names there uh, that uh, will actually be there and also speaking. This is October the 12th. Uh, starts at 6.30. The, the doors are open at 6. It's going to be there uh, at the Wahoo Stadium uh, in Pensacola, Florida, at 351 West Cedar Street, Pensacola, Florida, we're hoping to get to see you there. I will be placing the link for the tickets that you can get right in the description below. So be sure to look in the description below here on Israeli News Live YouTube. I'll be placing that in there for you. And uh, just a quick, this little news broadcast is going to be pretty simple that I wanted to share with you tonight. And uh, uh, I do have some more things coming over there for our friends over on Patreon uh, I've been reviewing some of the notes that I have. There's so much information I still have not posted yet that I need to get posted for you guys, uh, things that are going on. And uh, hopefully I'll be getting an update uh, on the situation in regards to uh, the, 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 the issue with asteroids and meteorites. So uh, let me get real quick onto this for you. It'll only take a few minutes and uh, share some of this with you. Uh, Mr. BBB, excuse me, Mr. MBB333 uh, posted a video here about a swarm of asteroids that are coming uh, as part of a uh, existing swarm that comes, I think, every year. But there are some large rocks in there. I want to play just a clip of what he says here for you because I think it is important. And then I'm going to just share with you some of the video footages that we are actually seeing here. So. Um, in just a minute, Mr. M uh, BB333, his channel here. Many of you guys already are, are, know him, but uh, listen to what he has to say He's here. He's doing well and having a great day. We're here at phys.org, P H Y S, article dated October 5th of 2021. Study of prior research suggests there is a swarm of large asteroids hidden in the Torrid complex. We are currently in the Torrid meteor shower, the, the southern Torrids, active from September 28th through December 2nd. The northern Torrids start here in about a week on October 13th and last through December 2nd. And both of these meteor showers stem from Comet 2P Inky. We're going to come back and take a closer look at these potential large asteroids that are tucked away in the Torrid complex the origins of the Torrid meteor shower. Speaking of meteor showers, we have a new one over here at spaceweather.com. So kind of looking at that right there, and uh, I'm not sure when Mr. M, uh, Mr. Uh, MBB333 gets into the larger size ones. Let me see if it's here. Meteor radar, and it's set up down here at McMurdo Station right here in this location. In fact, we'll see. Well, this one's in kind of interesting McMurdo. right here. We'll probably hear a ping or two in the background. He's going to talk about just how many have already come in. I, if I remember, it was like somewhere in this location. It was it in the hundreds, if not right hundreds, 403. 403? Now, 
404, 405. That's that ping you're hearing. Yesterday, it was over 13,000, nearly 14,000. The last time I checked, you can see the peak down here, peaking at just over two. And of course, so you are looking at very small little meteorites that are coming in. In fact, I was on the phone with a good friend of mine, Matthew, uh, with the EMP Shield, and he was telling me that about the uh, meteorites, just as we we're on the phone, he said, I just have seen two fly overhead here while we're out. Of course, I also live in an area where you can see extremely well. Uh, those uh, meteorites coming in and of course all these are mostly very small but as I've said to you before some of the things that have been shared with me over uh, with people in Washington there they're very concerned about three that are very large uh, that could potentially cause some catastrophic events on the earth at the end of November unless they're able to destroy them move them or something to that effect there all right let's take a look and see what else southern he's hemisphere and it's the byproduct of comet 15p finlay which i believe finlay is a byproduct of inky and inky is from a much larger comet that passed through the solar system some 20,000 years ago and i want to go back to that article that we started with study of prior research suggests there's a large swarm of asteroids hidden in the torrid complex and the torrid complex is right here and every once in a while earth gets very close to this area here where these large asteroids are supposedly lurking according to a pair of space scientists one out of the university of antoquia the other out of the university of salento have found evidence of a swarm of large asteroids hidden in the torrid complex and that's what we were just looking at right here and supposedly they go on to say that the 1908 tungusta event that asteroid originated from the torrid complex every year at the end of october an event known as the torrid meteor shower and that's what we just talked about over here from the american meteor society talking about the southern torrids and the northern torrids goes on to say every year at the end of October, an event known as the Torrid Meteor Shower occurs, giving those who venture out into the dark spaces the opportunity to witness a host of shooting stars. Prior research has shown that they are actually debris left behind by Comet Inky as it passes relatively close to the sun each year. In this new effort, Farron and Orofino, those are the two scientists from the two respective universities, claim they have found evidence of a swarm of large asteroids hiding in the torrid complex, and they would be hiding right here in this area. Now, if you'll notice on there, let me just back up just a little bit, in the article where uh, he is showing you here, there they have on here, while studying the torrid complex, the researchers found two asteroids that had not been seen before. Measurements of two space rocks showed them to be 200 and 300 meters. That, 300 meters, think about it. A thousand feet nearly. I mean, nearly, not exactly. Maybe 800 feet, probably a little bit more precise on that. But uh, one of the ones that I was told about is a quarter of a mile wide. That's the one that's supposed to hit the subsubduction zone off the coast of California. Unless we're able to break it up or destroy it, something to that effect, or even move it off course. And, and remember, there is a good chance that we can do that. We have technology that is just not known to the general public. And uh, listen, I want to be able to come back. I'll be having a meeting this week with some friends up in Washington that are part of this uh, program, the secret space program that we have. And uh, I'll be getting an update to see if they've had any more success or not. And I do want to be able to come back and say, Hey, they did something with it because the last thing we want is this thing hitting and causing the damage that it could cause. And of course, the other one would be hitting off the coast of Puerto Rico. I was told that the one that would hit off the coast of Puerto Rico, it would affect with a significant tsunami that would affect the uh, east coast of the United States, but it wouldn't be uh, majorly significant. Uh, but of course, they said where it would hit near Puerto Rico, it would severely impact Puerto Rico southern Florida and parts of the coastline going up as far north as North Carolina. Uh, I still don't, I think that one is relatively not super serious, but yet still serious enough. And uh, thus far, we just have not been able to do much with that. So anyway, I'll put the link here for Mr. MBB333 in the uh, links area below. Just want to share with you some of these uh, interesting ones that have been 
popping up on here for you so you can see uh, we're getting a lot of these little fireballs pop up in the sky. And of course, I was told that we should be hearing some with sonic booms this time around as well. And of course, you're going all the way to December the 2nd. I was told late November is when the three big rocks would be coming in. Uh, so I just wanted to be able to share these things with you there just so you can see some of the ones that are coming out. You know, we're, and you, you don't always catch these things either, you know, so uh, it's hard to catch these things by camera light. But there you go again, another one coming in there, that one there in, uh, I think, France. Uh, the first one, I believe, here was uh, Colorado. Second one, uh, France. And now the third one that I have here, this was Pittsburgh, USA. And uh, there that one comes in right there. And uh, something I did not know about, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit. Oh, that's the second one there, Pittsburgh. Sorry about that. To the same one. Sky News also put out this one right here. And... Uh, where they caught this one coming in. This one was a pretty brilliant one as well. Um, and uh, Chanel Islands there, very, very bright asteroid coming in. But uh, one thing that I was totally unaware of, I saw this article here, Sleeping Woman Avoids Death by Inches After Meteorite. I'm sitting here looking at this thing in the bed, the hole in the roof, and I'm like, wait a minute, meteorites come in on fire, the thing should have burned up her bed. Why is, why is it sitting there in the bed and nothing's happened, right? And oddly enough, I was about ready to just bypass the thing like no big deal, Who you know, it's just probably a hoax or something. And then I saw this video here, and I want to play this little clip for you here because this surprised me. I did not know this about meteorites or asteroids, whatever the case may be, with the exception of the really big stuff, I guess. The largest piece recovered is this monster weighing in at 13 kilograms, nearly 29 pounds. To buy a space rock of this size, a private collector would have to shell out about $400,000. Let me back it up, sorry. Scientists immediately collect the amazing videos, map the locations they were shot from, and triangulate the landing zone of the fireball. The data points to a big target in western Saskatchewan, but now they have to fall for three or four minutes of freefall. In November in Canada, it's, you know, and it hits a frozen lake. It, it's a cold to, to toast the outside of the rock. And then you, it's got a minute or two or three or four minutes of free fall. In November Still in Canada. Still backing up. Sorry about that. The thing, they come in, they're on fire. Thanks to Hollywood. It's far more dramatic if you have a fireball coming in and it hits the ground and it blows up buildings. <laughs> Nothing could be further from the truth. The thing burns out miles up in the air. You see from the fireball video, it's, it's only a second or two of a fire. Uh, just enough to, to, to toast the outside of the rock. And then you've, it's got a minute or two or three or four minutes of free fall. In November in Canada, it's, you know, and it hits a frozen lake. It, it's a cold rock hitting a cold lake. The meteorite fall. All right, so there you have it right there from the scientists there, and I, I didn't know that. Uh, so that was very interesting. So now I go back to that lady right there, and I'm like, okay, so it did knock a hole in the roof and, and landed in her bed. And by the way, you can actually get insurance for your house to protect from meteorites. What do you know? Uh, I guess if it just knocks a hole in your roof, it's not that big of a deal, but uh, something interesting, to no, no doubt. Anyway, don't forget, be sure uh, we'll be there in Pensacola, Florida on October the 12th there at the Freedom Rally. Uh, I did mention that we're going to, once we get a hotel chosen, we haven't chosen a hotel as of yet, uh, we're going to try to see if there's a way we can get a little conference room there, but I'm sure it'll be very limited if we can get a conference room uh, to where we might be able to speak with some of you there. Uh, but if not, we hope to see you at the rally there, get to speak to you a little bit, maybe afterwards or something like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, this will be, especially if you live near the area, you know, I don't want to encourage you to come from long distances and stuff because that's a, that's a big trip for such a short period of time. Uh, but if you're near the area, we'd love to be able to greet you uh, maybe before or after something like that. A heads up here as we have an alert from the NOAA saying that we have a geomagnetic storm heading in this way. And this warning is based on a solar flare that was observed coming off the sun here over the weekend. Now they're saying that this can cause weak power grid fluctuations. 
that there might even be voltage alarms that go off as this thing comes in and starts to hit different areas. Now they say that uh, this was on the Earth-facing side of the sun. As they put this warning out, they say that the flare was so big that it may affect the space stations, causing them to have to face this orientation malfunction, so to speak, and that the ground crews would get them back on track. When they start talking like this, that we're going to see disruptions and possible grid fluctuations, especially with them talking about the energy crisis and blackouts in countries already, I wanted to bring this to the top of the list here and put some eyes on it. You can see in the later hours of the 11th, here today, it's when it's expected to spike. So later this evening into the early morning hours of tomorrow is when we're going to see the height of this. And they're also putting out a watch for Aurora because this could really light up the northern latitudes with some beautiful sky events. So that is the latest. If we see any outages, if we see anything from this, do note that there is an incoming flare or flares or energies expected to hit Earth here today that could cause problems. I'll leave a link below. Make sure to follow me over on DLive. Go on. I mean, we got so much things coming. I can't even holler report them all. There's so much going on. I'm going to go at, uh, I'm going to have to just show you some click, uh, click, um, some, uh, scenes from, uh, Lewis in Florida. I cannot play them all, people. Uh, I got, uh, Carrie getting to get to, and I have the Bible to get to, and it's going to cover uh, quite a bit of time, so... I'm going to try to go ahead and just show you guys what I want you to go look at. I will post it in the description box. Uh, this thing called It's Alive. Uh, everybody's talking about it. Okay. Uh, and I will put that in the description box. And also, uh, I think it was something else. Uh, I think we just did that one there. But let me see here. There was another one coming in. Uh, well, I don't know. This one here from Lewis in Florida, okay? So I will put both of these in the description box. They're kind of controversial too, so I don't even know if I should play them on here or not. So I will put them in the description box and then also I'm gonna come here now and go to, uh, before I get to Carrie getting, I wanna show this little short video here coming from KPRC to Click to Houston. Uh, and I'm hoping I don't get in trouble for it because I really want you guys to see this, people. <laughs> I love these kind of things. Miracles, miracles, miracles are still happening. Absolutely. And this brother here just had me a, a going because I'm saying, oh, my goodness, you have to obey the Lord when he talked to you. You need to obey him, people. He can say go to Walmart. He can say go to the grocery store. He can say go anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. And this brother here listened to Yeshua's voice and saved this three-year-old kid. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I can't let it go past you. So I'm going to go ahead and mute it and play it. And then I will get to Carrie getting and in the Bible. Okay, let me go ahead and do that right now. Man, this is I love this kind of stuff. Okay. Last night I was in a Bible study that we have every other Friday. And there were a number of people talking about this little boy who's been lost. And it was news to me. This is the first I'd heard of it. But I, you know, I'm not paying attention to news, anything. And so I was prompted then by the Spirit to say, you will go look for that boy. Or you will search the woods. And so I said, okay. And so we, our, our group at the end, we always do a lot of prayer times. We were praying for him. And now it's, you know, it's two days. Today makes the third day. And uh, so I got up this morning, did my Bible study, devotional time, prayer time, like I try to do every day. And I was, my, my wife came in and said, what are you going to do today? I said, well, I'm going to go out in the woods and see if I can find that boy. And and I did. How, <laughs> how long were you out there looking for him? I left here at a quarter till 10, and I found him at 1130. And he was only like three quarters of a mile up the, the pipeline here. Well, I kind of went off on some different rabbit trails. So he was, he was along the pipeline then? 
Yeah, yep. just right, like 10 yards into the woods, the thicket. Did you totally. hear him or? Well, I was walking up the pipeline and I heard a noise, but it sounded like maybe it could be an animal in distress. Sometimes deer will do that. They'll mm -hmm. kind of make noises like you think it's a, maybe a human. So I'm walking a little bit further and I'm really listening hard. I'm wanting to hear a child, right? And so then I hear what sounds like a, a human child in distress. But I couldn't understand the words. As it turns out, he only speaks Spanish. And I, could, I couldn't understand what he might have been saying. But I, every time I heard, I yelled out, hello, hello. Didn't get a response. So I'm thinking, this is weird. And so I, as soon as I heard it the second time, I'm calling uh, Grimes County to let them know, hey, send somebody out here. I've, you know, I've heard this sound twice. And so I think he could be here. And they came out and I, and I told them where to go looking. Mm -hmm. And they started looking, like I said, I think I heard the noise up the pipeline a little further off to the right. And they were doing their thing and they're yelling for Christopher, Chris, Christopher. And now I know his name. And so as I'm walking back down the pipeline to come back home and uh, I hear the noise, I stop. And then I said, Christopher. And this time I got a response. Prior to that, I never got a response when I yelled out, but I called his name and he responded. And he kept talking, talking, and I, and, I, and I just went through the thicket of the woods and I found him and picked him up and he was totally naked, no shoes, no clothing, nothing. Uh, he might have had a few scratches, but I, I, you know, I, didn't, I didn't check him out to see, but he was unscathed been out of the woods for th three days without food or water. Picked him up, he wasn't shaking, he wasn't nervous, he was calm. And there had been a lot of people out of this community praying for that little boy. Many had given up hope. And uh, the story is don't give up hope. Right. And God's still in the, in the miracle business. He's still answering prayer. Hmm. Yep. Yep. Definitely is. Definitely is. Yep. How far is it from here where, where you found him at? Probably three quarters of a mile. Pretty good walk back into there? Yeah, it's up the pipeline. There's not. It's it's a cleared pipeline. Oh, it's cleared pipeline? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. To be able to get that message and, and you walk out holding him, I mean, mm. what does that mean for you? Oh, it well, it, what it tells me is when God prompts you to do something, you have to do it. And there wasn't any, any doubt in my mind. God has prompted me a few times in my life, and there was no doubt he wanted me to do something. For, for what reason? I didn't know. But today is just to be in obedience, being obedient and open and, and uh, letting him do what he— sometimes in the busyness of life, we can, we can shut him out <laughs> when he might want us to do something. Mm -hmm. How has this experience emotionally moved you? I see your eyes are a little glazy. You know? Oh, it's, I mean, it's been a little crazy. I mean, it's, you know, I haven't been as invested in this whole story like so many other people have been. They've been praying for days, you know, and for me, it was, it was news last night to me. And uh, I just, I'm, you know, just confirms what I already, what I already know, <laughs> that uh, God has a plan. And he can use any of us if we're willing to submit to that plan. So. Hallelujah. Praise Yah, everybody. Praise Yah another time. Amen and amen. This is your sister, Carrie Ann in Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, I really just want to follow on from the video that I've just done concerning the false prophet, concerning the false prophet doing fake miracles, all right? Doing fake miracles when, it, when his time has come to rule alongside the Antichrist, all right? This is called really the unholy trinity, the unholy trinity, which is Satan, the Antichrist, and the Pope. So the Pope represents the Holy Spirit, 
and these people are so wicked. Uh, Paul represents the Holy Spirit, the, anti the false prophet represents the Holy Spirit. The Antichrist, well, he represents the Son of God and Satan as God the Father. But obviously all power is going to give to the Antichrist, so people are going to worship that thing. But brothers and sisters, listen, I want to do a follow-on video because this is on my heart for the past two days really and i really want to do the video because um i don't want to forget it all right so what am i going to say right so you hear this talking about transhumanism hmm. you hear that talking a lot isn't it well we probably can't say that word as much as we can because <laughs> you you is going to pick it up because it's one of their agenda, isn't it? So I don't want to say transhumanism. So what are we going to call it? We're going to call it... Uh, we're going to call it TH. Trans for T, human for H. So we're going to call it TH, all right? Until I come up with a proper word, all right? So, brothers and sisters, as we're heading into the ending of days, as we're heading into the ending of days, you know, you see a lot of wicked Hollywood movie with machine and human colliding together and all that foolishness. But they are literally programming the world to say this is where we're heading. Because they, you see, Satan hates everything that is good. Everything that Yah calls good. And one of the things that Yah calls good is humanity. When he created Adam and Eve, he said it is good. And so anything that Yah calls good, Satan absolutely hates and despises. He's so jealous. He's the epitome of jealousy. You know, we have brothers and sisters, you know, shows jealousy. And that's wicked and that's awful and horrible. and shouldn't be jealous of anybody, really. But when it comes to jealousy, brothers and sisters, I don't think anybody in this world can exercise it like Satan. This is, this is beyond what your heart and mind can comprehend. Satan is proper. He is the definition of jealousy. All right? And so one of the things that Satan wants to do is to create a world that is suitable for him. All right? And unfortunately, unfortunately, but it is Bible prophecy, he will get it for three and a half years. It is a, it's a seven year tribulation, but for the first three and a half years, yeah, he's going to accomplish some stuff. <laughs> he's going to accomplish some stuff. And one of the things that he's going to accomplish is a trans, is a, is a TH. It's a TH, brothers and sisters. And this is going to make possible, listen to me very carefully. This is going to be made possible through the wicked device that I've spoken about, which is the three sixes. Which is the mark of the three sixes in Revelation 13, verses 16 onwards. And I just want to focus on the, on the mark itself. I don't want to really talk about, but there's three ways. There's three ways to become TH. Three, three ways to become TH. The mark, physical mark in your right hand or forehead, or worshiping the beast, literally giving praise and honor to the Antichrist, or the number. But I don't want to talk about worshiping the beast or the number yet, because it's all the same. But I just want to stick with the mark, which is the wicked device in your right hand or forehead. That is where they're going to place this thing. Okay. Now, for those people who have sadly, sadly want to save their lives, okay, who want to save their lives because they're so scared of what is to happen and what is to come. And one of the things that the wicked pharaohs are going to use is that, oh, well, if you don't have the three sixes, this is it. It's not like you're eating the pudding that the people are eating now because you still can go to the shops. Put on your mask, you go to the shop. You still can do certain things. Yes, they're trying to filter it out, but it's not the mark yet. But when the three sixes is rolled in, 
when the three sixes are rolled in, one of the criteria is that, and they're going to be very, very strict. There's not going to be no if, buts, or maybe. And one of the criteria is this, right? Listen, huh, you cannot go shopping. You cannot go by no supermarket. You cannot go to the supermarkets. You cannot do nothing at all unless you've got the three sixes. So you might say, oh, well, Sister Carrie Ann, oopsie days, I'm so sorry. You might say, oh, well, Sister Carrie Ann, well, if my, say, brother, if my brother gets the three sixes, all right, he's doomed for, but I can't tell him to go to the shop for me. He won't do it. If your families and friends right now in 2021 is pressuring, pressuring you to take the E.T. the pudding and the cursing you out and telling that you're silly, you're stupid, you're going to die and all of this because of the, the sickness that's going around and they're literally pressuring you to take the E.T. the pudding. Don't you think that the mark that these people are carrying, which is Satan, is inside? These people are Satanic. These are literally little Satan walking up and down. Do you think that they're going to go to the shops for you? No, they're going to shop you in. They're going to phone the authorities and tell the authorities, look, my mom hasn't taken the three sixes. I'm my husband. I'm my brother. They're going to shop you in. You cannot stay with them. You cannot. This is the reason why I keep on saying all the time, all of these YouTubers and pastors and people who's running up and down, telling the world, oh, this, the, the E.T. is the mark. It is not. Because if it was the mark, you could not stay with your husband. You could not stay with your wife who has eaten the E.T. pudding. You could not work with the colleagues. You couldn't do it. Brothers and sisters, it is not. It is wicked. And it's got the E.T., all right, it's got the ET um, liquid in the pudding, and it's very, very wicked. It's very wicked, and you mustn't take it, you must stay away from it. And those who take it need to begin to pray, and that's the most I have for forgiveness. But it is not the three sixes. guys i'm not gonna play all that okay i'm gonna leave it in the description box i just want to play some of it uh because i got to get to the bible okay because all these things are going on around us and like i said uh make sure you see lewis reports and other reports in the description box i know this one here is about the the military guys okay make sure you see it uh it's just a lot of this stuff is going on but you know like i said uh, I've been telling y'all on my channel for many, 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 many weeks now. You know what I think about all this stuff going on, you know? And Yeshua showed me in Job 13, 4, but you are forgers of lies. You are all physicians of no value. So why would I want to follow somebody who have no value and they are liars? I don't want to have nothing to do with it. We know all these things are coming on the earth right now. We got tsunami threats from the uh, La Palma. Uh, maybe later we'll have more threats coming out. We got Hawaii having all kind of troubles. Uh, so we don't know what can happen. I keep seeing 11-11. I know that. And I know war is really uh, escalating over there in Israel. Uh, so we need to know that it is an emergency. It is an emergency in our life right now. And we should be having faith in the Messiah. Uh, faith. You know, I love this term of faith forwarding all issues to heaven. We should be really doing that. We should do that right now uh, because we have gone against the morals, the Ten Commandments. We have gone against the Ten Commandments and we need to be understanding how it is so important that we repent. As she was just saying, we need to repent. So I'm going to go here now to the Bible and I think I did tell you guys, uh, Joel, right? Joel, the day of the Lord. Uh, Joel 2, and I'm going to try to get through much as of it as I can, 31 uh, verses, I think it is, I think it is, if I'm not correct, uh, 30, uh, 32 verses, okay, so I'm going to try to get through it much as I can, and I'm here at an hour already, hour and three minutes, so I'm going to try to get through it, I don't want this video to be no longer than like an hour, 15 minutes or something, I don't know if I can get through it in 15 minutes, but I'm going to attempt to, okay, so uh, I just thought it was really strange, I just asked the father what to what to talk about today and he gave me Joel uh, again and then so it's so important because I had this dream last night and I'm not going to get into the whole dream but 
I had a dream, a real a crazy dream about uh, judgment. And actually in the dream, this person in the dream was talking at me and I, and I was trying to figure out why I couldn't see this person. And they called and said, oh, uh, I can't come get you because me and my boss are planning for the judgments, uh, uh, getting ready for the judgments. And he had this, he just had this real uh, weird voice and he's like, and you could tell like he was being demonically attacked or something. And I know this particular person did take the, you know what, but I just know that it's just, we're going to be having all kinds of things go on. That's why I want you to go and listen to Carrie, get in the rest of that message. Okay. But we know all these things are going on. We might have uh, the people coming out of the closets. I don't know, you know, all over the place. I heard a guy yesterday say that he's a doctor and he was saying he noticed that people are committing suicide. Uh, people are going crazy, shooting their cells, shooting their families. He just see a rage in the world today. And a lot of people are just getting depressed and it's just a lot of things are happening, people. So uh, we need to be, I haven't had much prayer come forth before me in a long time. Everybody calling me, emailing me, pray, 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 pray for this, pray for that. Uh, I'm in the hospital, I want to get out and, and then I pray and they go home the next day. And, and Yeshua is really listening to prayers right now if you are his child. So you need to be giving your life to Messiah right now. So let's go here and see what he is saying to us from uh, Joel. Let's go see what he's saying here from, from the Bible. Okay, what he's saying to us from, from Job here. Okay. And he's saying here, uh, the day of the Lord, uh, blow the trumpet in Zion, warning of impending judgment. And that's what I was one. I, I just thought it was funny because I just had the dream and it was talking about judgment. This person wanted to say, I'm getting ready for judgment. Uh, the devil's getting ready for judgment. Judgment, people. Uh, we know we need to know that it, we, it's just happening. It's escalating everywhere. So I would just, this is another confirmation here coming from the Bible, from the Lord. Okay. Father, be with me as I read your word to the people. Cover me with your blood. Cover me with your Holy Spirit as I read to the people your word. We know we're in the days of trouble. Uh, we know things are about to escalate like never before. So we're asking you to help the people, Father, to wake up out there, to wake up, to wake up, to wake up. And so we ask for your Holy Spirit now as I read your word. Uh, the day of the Lord, blow the trumpet in Zion, warning of impending judgment. Sound an alarm on my holy mountain, Zion, that all the inhabitants of the land tremble and shudder in fear for the, for the judgment day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand. It is close at hand. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds, of thick, dark mist, like the dawn spread over the mountains. There is a pagan hostile. It's true pagan, hostile people, numerous and mighty, the like of which has never been before, nor will be again afterwards, even for years of many generations. People, this is where we're heading. This is where we're heading right now. You see all these volcanoes and all these fires. We just had a fire here in Colorado this weekend. I'm glad they got it to 90%, 95%, but it was right here close, not too far away, but maybe 50 miles from me. But uh, I'm telling you, it's just, we're going to have all kinds of things coming out at us. Before them, a fire devours, and behind them, a flame burns. Before them, the land is like the Garden of Eden, but behind them, a desolate wilderness, and nothing at all escapes them. Oh my goodness, nothing at all going to escape us, people. Their appearances is like the appearance of horses, and they run like war horses, war horses, like the noise of chariots. They leap on the top of the mountains, like the crackling of a flame of fire devouring the stubble, like a mighty people set in battle formation. Oh my goodness, it's happening in Israel, it's happening right now, Russia, China, uh, Iran, Iraq. You know, we got all these things just going on. Uh, everybody's wondering who's going to drop the next bomb. Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? We know we got a lot of things going on with the Vatican. Who, when they're going to sign the peace treaty? I don't know, people. We're watching and, and watching and watching because we got October. We got November. Uh, we got all kind of things. December supposed to be a, a month of, of awakening like never before. I'm hearing everybody say this. Before them, the people are in anguish. All faces become pale. They run like warriors. They climb the wall like soldiers. They each march straight ahead in line and they do not deviate their paths from their paths. 
They do not crowd each other. Each one marches in his path. When they burst through the defenses, weapons, they do not break ranks. They rush over the city. They run over the wall. They climb up to the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. The earthquakes before them. The, the heavens tremble. The sun and the moon grow, what? Dark. And the stars lose their brightness. And you know, we've been talking about all these solar flares today, all the things going on. Uh, 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 what did Stephen and Noon talk about? Asteroids, massive ones getting ready to come. Uh, we just got all these things going on right before, before us. The Lord utters his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, because strong and powerful is he who obediently carries out his word. For the day of the Lord is indeed great and very terrible, causing dread. Who can endure it? Okay, who can endure it? As the woman said, uh, 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 God's healer, seven, I think I'm saying that right. She was saying too that when people, if people think God is dead, they're going to finally begin to see that he's alive when all these things are happening, okay? Return to the Lord is the message here today. Return to the Lord. Even now, says the Lord, turn and come to me with all your heart and genuine repentance, with fasting and weeping and mourning until every barrier is removed and the broken fellowship is restored. Rip your heart to pieces and sorrow and construction and not your garments. Now return in repentance to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness, faithful to his covenant with his people, and he relents his sentence of evil when his people genuinely repent, hallelujah, who knows whether he will relent and revoke your sentence and leave a blessing behind him, even a grain of offering and a drink offering from the bounty he provides you for the Lord your God. Oh, hallelujah. Blow a trumpet in Zion, warning of impending judgment, delicate a fast as a day of restraint and humility. Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the nursing infants let the bridegroom come out of his room and the bride out of her bridal chamber no one is excused from the assembly he said let all who he said let all what whosoever will let them come he always said that whosoever will let them come children grandchildren uh, uh, whoever children don't matter grown-ups uh, old people it doesn't matter people rich people poor people he said no one is excused from the assembly people no one is excused let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep before the porch and the altar and let them say, have compassion and spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your inheritance Israel an object of ridicule or a humiliating byword among the Gentile nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is a God? And that's what a lot of people say, where is your God? Where is your God? You know, my God is not dead. He's alive. Oh, yes, indeed. He's going to show soon, people. He's going to show soon. The Lord had pity. Then the Lord would be jealous for his land, ready to defend it since it is rightfully and uniquely his. Watch out, Israel. Okay. And will have compassion on his people, Israelites and Hebrews and Gentiles who belong to him, people. And will spare them. And will spare them. The Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I am going to send you grain and new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied with full with them and I will never again make you an object of ridicule among the Gentile nations but I will remove the northern army far away from you and I will drive it into a parched and desolate land with his forward God into the eastern sea the Dead Sea and with his rear God into the western sea the Mediterranean Sea and its strength stench will arise and his foul odor of the cave will come up this is the fate of the northern army in the final, final day of the Lord, for he has done great things. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I was thinking about Russia, the northern army. And you know, that's who are over there now. All Russia uh, is in Israel. And then we got China all over the place. We got all kind of things going on, people. Do not fear, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not
not be afraid, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness have turned green, the tree has produced its fruit, and the fig tree and the vine has yielded in full. So rejoice, O children of Zion, and delight in the Lord your God, for he has given you the early autumn rain and vindication. Oh, autumn is here, people coming. I'm just looking at the trees turning yellow and stuff riding around today. Uh, but I just think this is a real timely message. Uh, and he has poured down the rain for you, the early autumn rain and the late spring rain as before, and the treasured floors shall be full of grain, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. We just had the Feast of Tabernacles, okay, where they talk about the grain. They talk about the, uh, the tre you know, all these things. Uh, so we know we are right in the time of the season. And I will compensate you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the creeping locust, the stripping locust, and the gnawing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who had dealt wonderfully with you, wonderfully with you. And my people shall never be put to shame and you shall know without any doubt that I am in the midst of Israel to protect and bless you and that I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people will never be put to shame. Hallelujah. The Lord will pour out his spirit. It shall come about after this that I shall pour out my spirit on all mankind and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on the male and the female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show signs and wonders, displaying my power in the heavens and on the earth. Isn't that happening right now? Displaying his powers in the heavens and on the earth. Blood and fire and columns of smoke. Go ask Canary Islands what's going on over there now. Go ask them. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Oh, people, oh, people. And it shall come about that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved uh, uh, from the coming judgment. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be those who escape, as the Lord has said, even among the remnant of survivors whom the Lord calls, they will escape, people. I, I just think this is such a timely message just to be given to me in minutes after I walk in the door, people. And so I'm going to go and let you guys go. I know I didn't want to go this long, but a uh, very important message. Uh, I'm going to go on over here to Maranatha and close out right now. And Maranatha here is amazing. Uh, the last video, I talked about the Sabbath being a sign for God's people. And he gave me this today again, the importance and glory of the Sabbath. Okay. So, you know, it it's really must be important to him for him to give me this today, people. We need to understand how important the Sabbath is. It is absolutely a sign for his people. It's time to come out of Babylon. Come out, come out of her, come out of her, my people. So let me go ahead and do this here right now. Read it out. August 25, importance and glory of the Sabbath. I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Isaiah 58, 14. Sabbath, we had a sweet, glorious time. We were made to rejoice and glorify God for his exceeding goodness unto us. I was taken off in vision. I saw that we sensed and realized but little of the importance of the Sabbath to what we yet should realize and know of its importance and glory. I saw we knew not what it is yet to ride upon the high places of the earth and to be fed with the heritage of Jacob. But when the refreshing and latter rain shall come from the presence of the Lord and the glory of his power, we shall know what it is to be fed with the heritage of Jacob and ride upon the high places of the earth. Then shall we see the Sabbath more in its importance and glory. But we shall not see it in all its glory and importance until a covenant of peace is made with us at the voice of God and the pearly gates of the new Jerusalem are thrown open and swing back on their glittering hinges and the glad and joyful voice of the lovely Jesus is heard richer than any music that ever fell on mortal ear, bidding us enter. 
I saw that we had a perfect right in the city, for we had kept the commandments of God, and heaven, sweet heaven, is our home. I saw the Ten Commandments written on them, the tables of stone with the finger of God. On one table were four, and on the other six. The four on the first table shone brighter than the other six. But the fourth, the Sabbath commandment, shone above them all. For the Sabbath was set apart to be kept in honor of God's holy name. The holy Sabbath looked glorious. A halo of glory was all around it. I saw that the Sabbath commandment was not nailed to the cross. If it was, the other nine commandments were, and we are at liberty to break them all, as well as to break the fourth. I saw that the Holy Sabbath is and will be the separating wall between the true Israel of God and unbelievers, and that the Sabbath is a great question to unite the hearts of God's dear waiting saints. Okay, guys, so commandments is very urgently important for God's people. We need to be really understanding how important it is. I'm going to get ready to go now, people. I thank you guys for watching. I just want to come and close. Uh, and I want to just thank you guys for the orphans and uh, the homeless and the orphans and the widows and those in need in mission fields. Uh, we were out today uh, at the homeless sites again today, uh, giving out Bibles and a snack and some money for gas and things like that. So we really appreciate all your offerings to help this situation and to help these situations, I mean, and all the people in the mission fields. Uh, I've been coming, I will be coming back doing a full mission report uh, coming from Africa and India and all over uh, this week sometime. But I tell you, uh, pray for these people in the mission fields, all the uh, missionaries that go out and risk their lives yeah. every day. Uh, may Yahuwah richly bless each and every one of you. Uh, the new name. The no donation app options here, a timely app, uh, cash app, uh, our bump card, https, colon slash slash juniormarner.thebumpcard.me, uh, also donation options, uh, fmcmi.org, uh, marner.camel at gmail at, at gmail.com, paypal, I'm sorry, and also, also mailing your donations at Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. And the shipping address is Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video, people. Uh, I just thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will go ahead and say a short prayer here before I leave. But I need you guys to understand how important it is right now, how important it is to pray right now for just not America, the nations all over the world. Uh, as a lot of people know, we are about to go through a testing time, a time of trouble that we have never gone through. And we just ask that you continually keep us in prayer as well. And we keep you in prayer day and night. We pray, I pray uh, really, uh, I pray twice a day or more a day. I do every day, every day, not once a week, every day, every single day. We're praying for the ministries out there, uh, the people on our channel, all the people in the prayer box. So Father, be with all the people today. We ask that you come and be with each and every one of them watching. We ask that you be with their homes, Father. Just heard on the news a plane crashed into a home in, in San Diego. You know, we can have all these things go on around us. That's why every day I pray, I pray, I pray for protection over all of us, for the things falling from the sky, missiles bomb earthquakes mega quakes asteroids fireballs oh father praying against fires and uh, floods collapses explosions all these things that can come you said to pray that we can escape these things coming on the earth pray that we'll be worthy worthy to escape these things coming on the earth help us to be worthy my father i ask that you supply all the people needs according to your riches and glory whether it's physical mentally spiritually so i bind satan and all his evil angels below beyond beneath mentioned and unmentioned known and unknown I bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way. We ask for your Holy, Holy Spirit to cover your people, to awaken your people, to help your people to know you are coming soon. And we are in the end at the end. So I thank you so much, Father, for your love for us, your care for us. We thank you for this message from Amos. Uh, we bless your holy name. We lift you up today, Father. We ask you blessings in your name. Bless the people, Father. Thank you so much for all you do for us. We ask you blessings in your name. Shalom. So I'm going to go now, people. I'm going to say shalom. I love you guys so much uh, I hope that you can share these videos or get them out to the people uh, all the links are in the description box as always I will add some additional news if I can so uh, I'm gonna go now so you guys have a wonderful rest of Monday 
And I thank you so much again for all your support and all your prayers. Shalom.